I am going to pass the mic to my friend Maureen here, who is a new com- new community member, uh, someone I recently just connected with through my church. Uh, my church has a, a small business group gathering that they do every week, and I try to attend those whenever I can. But we do go to the same church, and that's how we originally met. And she was talking about solar panels, her background, and I'm like, hmm, interesting, because I have a lot of clients, some of you are in the house already, that already have solar panels. Like I've, I've over the last four years, coaching clients that have homes, quite a few of you have solar panels. And I, it was just one of those debts that I just didn't pay no mind to. I didn't think of like, what are some of the the benefits of having solar panels? So it wasn't until I met Maureen and she kind of connected the dots in terms of velocity banking, how, what we're doing, accelerating debt, you know, redirecting cash flow, building our credit. Here is a, an opportunity, not for everyone, because it's an, it's a high ticket item and, you know, we got it. It has to make sense. But here is a tool, a a, a high ticket type of equipment, solar panels, that when you acquire it through, let's say, financing, because not everyone has 40, 50, 60 grand lying around to invest in solar panels. This is the only type of debt outside of business debt at 0% or credit cards at 0% where you can actually go into debt, right? And actually have a, a lesser net expense cost of living. So you can actually reduce your expenses by acquiring solar panels, let's say through financing, because that's how most people would would do it, not just pay it outright via via cash. So you can redirect cash flow, lower expenses, control your cost in one area, being your electricity costs. So you're fighting against inflation and it's an asset that increases the value of our home, which then puts more equity into our property, which secures our debt tools on the HELOC, whether it's first lien, second, even more, you know? So I, I just saw like so many different benefits here that I've, I was like, let me establish a relationship. Uh, how can we work together? So I want to give the floor to Maureen. If you can reintroduce yourself, um, your experience, just us working together so far and any updates, anything you'd like to share in the industry of you know, solar panels, what's going on, any news updates, how people can learn more if they're a homeowner, if they're in the market for solar panels or they've been considering it. I do have a few clients uh, that I've spoken to in the past and recently that have homes and it's part of their uh, agenda to get solar panels. I even have clients typically in the military with the VA loans that actually are building homes from the ground up and can potentially also include solar panels into that. So a lot of cool things. I want to give you the floor and take it away. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Great presentation, Brittany. I do love your energy, Denzel. I also love your personality and style too. So everyone's different. No need to switch it up. And um, yeah, I'm also Puerto Rican. I don't look like it like Denzel does. <laughs> I have to share this Instagram with you. Actually, Denzel, my sister follows it. It's like Team Puerto Rico. And they do the funniest reels. I was making tostones today. And last night I was in bed watching this. It was like, you know, you're Puerto Rican when you find all of these inanimate objects in the kitchen to try to smash tostones. And it was like a bowl and something else in the bottom. I was laughing. I was like, yeah, only Puerto Ricans get this. So sidebar. Um, yeah, for those of you that didn't hear me, I think it was the end of October when Denzel was kind enough to kind of give me the floor and I did more of a formal sort of solar presentation and share slides and stuff. So that was fun. So some of you may have seen me from that. If you haven't, my name is Maureen. Yes. And I met Denzel a few months ago at our church, um, small business entrepreneur group. Um, and I currently am an independent consultant for a company called power, which I found out about recently. And I fell in love with the company. I didn't know a lot about solar, but actually my degrees are in astrophysics and geology about 20 years ago from UCLA. So I actually worked in environmental sciences. I got offered a pretty high salary right out of school, almost $200,000, but it would have required me to go work on an offshore oil rig. I didn't want the lifestyle. (laughs) And even back then, I just felt really weird about, you know, getting into fracking and um, drilling at the bottom of the ocean for oil. Like my heart was thinking even back then, I really feel like we should be in renewable energy. So I didn't. And I went and I worked for EPA and 
uh, NASA and did a lot more like hazardous waste inspections and um, cleanup at refineries. Then I got really bored with all that. So I had health issues and became a health coach and entrepreneur and left corporate and had my own coaching business for years and worked in some different MLM companies. And then I found out about power and it's interesting how God works. Now I kind of came full circle back to my roots, but I was able to learn all, you know, take all the other skills that I had learned with, you know, consulting and education and presenting with this platform and really learn a lot about the solar space and had no idea. I would just love it so much. So Now I really feel like it's a ministry that God's put on my heart to really help all of my friends that I know who own homes and educate them because there's, I think a lot of, um, and I was one of them. I, I always thought, you know, it was, it was really expensive. I didn't understand the true cost savings, how long the technology has been around for. So I know Denzel got into some of the value propositions of it. Um, but I would say the six biggest things that I, that I talk to people about, and it overlaps so much with the velocity banking, as you shared, but really it's, it's the cost savings. And I would say now is really the time to consider going solar because a couple months ago, I was really able to help people instantly save a lot of money on their monthly bill. It wasn't as much of a long-term strategy for wealth management, um, and wealth creation, but the interest rates on a lot of these loans now are going up. So there's very few left that are almost like cash. So you guys that understand the velocity banking concept, if you do have a home and you want to just see if the numbers, and not every home qualifies. I had a friend reach out to me last week and then she sent me her um, bill and I, I ran it through the system and I looked at Google Earth and I was like, oh my gosh, you didn't tell me you lived in like the middle of a forest. <laughs> you know, we can put panels, but you have to get like a tree removal quote. And she's like, Oh, I was hoping you would have some sort of, I was like, I can't control like how the sun comes through the trees. Like you need to remove the trees for the panels to work. Did you get a quote? She said, yeah, it's like $45,000 to remove the trees. I was like, okay, well, unless you just really want to help the planet, if at all, this is like a cost savings thing, like it's, it's a net, it's not going to work for you. So I don't want to say everyone's going to qualify in your home, but there's a hundred million homes theoretically that are good fits for solar in the United States right now. And only 4 million have them. So there's a good chance that if you own a home and you don't live in the middle of a forest <laughs> and your credit score is over 650, you could be a really good candidate for solar. So depending on the cost of your electricity right now, you may or may not have a significant increase or sorry, decrease in the, in your um, monthly output. If you live in California, it's over 40 cents a kilowatt hour that Californians are paying and you can lock your solar payment in at about, I'm seeing it depending on the financing anywhere from about 10 to 15 cents. And so you're hedging against inflation because you're going to keep that same payment for the next 20 years until your solar payments paid off. And then it's like a mortgage, then you don't have the payment anymore, right? So electricity is going up like crazy. It follows the price of fossil fuels. You guys kind of seen what's going on with the economy. Also, there's the 30% federal tax credits. A lot of states, I see Chris and uh, Kareen, you guys said you have solar. I just wonder what state you live in, if you got any of the SREX. So some of them have them both of them typing at once. <laughs> New York. Okay. So some states have additional solar renewable energy certificates available and also do state tax rebates too. So I just helped my friend in South Carolina this week go solar. So she got a 30% federal tax credit and the state of South Carolina also did a 25% credit. So she had 55% of her system paid for by the government and the rest she financed and her monthly payments were less than what she was paying for electricity, instant increase in equity in her home. She's saving the planet. So you're taking something that's a liability. You're turning it into an asset. You're saving tens of thousands of dollars. You're taking advantage of government money and handouts. You potentially could get additional um, new customer incentives or other things that are being rolled out by certain companies. My company has them that come from time to time. And then you're taking something that's high cost variable in perpetuity and turning into low, um, low cost fixed that eventually goes away. Um, and you're also taking the whole concept of owning versus renting that you already know is valuable because you did it with your home and now you get to do it with your energy. Because unless you want to live with lights out, right, we can't really get around certain things that we need for ourselves and our families, which is food and utilities. (laughs) So the other reason to consider doing it now 
versus in the future is a lot of states are going to start mandating it soon. Like California doesn't allow any new builds now without solar. I live in Florida. Miami County doesn't allow any new builds now without solar. So a lot of these states do have it in the legislation that by 2045 or 2050, it will require solar on homes. And so if you wait until it's forced and everyone's doing it, we already know how these things work, right? The supply chain demand is going to be a lot more strained cost of goods are going to go up. So the cost of doing it's just going to increase and increase. So I would say if you even want to know if you qualify, which I can't say, I'll drop a link. There's just like a job form you can fill out has some pre-qualifying questions. Then I can always call you, get the bill and just run it through the system. We can hop on a, a dynamic proposal of what's available to your home. And the numbers either work for you or they don't. It's not a hard sell. We'll just go through specifically what's available. It's either a fit or it's not, at least you tried. Um, I'm going into a full presentation. I want to give you guys all the facts and Cliff's notes, not bore you, but give you enough to be like, okay, this makes sense. Denzel, anything else? Let me put I that. think I think you're I think we're good. If you haven't anything else to share, um, what's what's been going on in California? I saw some some posting. Oh, about... the NEM 3.0. Yeah. Yeah. The um utility companies are really, 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 really not happy with the fact that everyone's going solar now. Um, and this is the thing, there's something called net metering and not every state or every utility company offers it. And so one-to-one -one net metering is great because that basically means so you have, you have the panels on your roof, right? They're collecting the energy from the sun. They're in direct current. Your house can't use DC. It uses AC. So you have inverter boxes on the side. So it takes the DC energy, converts it to AC energy. And then during the day, your home is directly using the, the energy made from the panels. But then any excess energy produced gets actually put back into the grid to your utility company. At nighttime, when you turn your lights on, you're technically getting electricity from the utility company, right? Because panels aren't producing, unless you have a battery, you could always store your extra energy, but that's most people don't have batteries. So, but what happens is a lot of the states started doing this thing where they actually increase the rate at nighttime. So you're buying back electricity from your utility company at a rate that's double or triple sometimes than what you sold it to them during the day. So the goal is to have a hundred percent offset. So you're taking as much energy as you need that your panels are producing. It just not, might not be at that exact time. So most utility companies used to offer a one-to-one -one net metering, meaning as long as over the course of a year, your panels produced enough energy that your home needed, you'd be in a net zero. And even if you did overproduction, they would actually give you a check for the overages at the end of the year. A lot of utility companies stopped doing that because they caught on to it. And now they're trying to push things through the government and make it really difficult for people to want to go solar because they're starting to try to make it not as financially, um, I guess, enticing, right? So I don't know if Chris and Corinne, it looks like you guys understand this concept really well. Maybe you want to share your experience for me since you have panels. Yeah, yeah so you guys have the floor. <laughs> yeah. That's basically how it, how it works over here in New York, where, um, or at least in, in where we we are in our part of Long Island. <clears throat> so we the, the $13 that we pay every month or $13.50 that we pay every month is the connection to the grid. So essentially, right. when I see a bill that's $13.80 something that essentially just came out just this, this week, that's my payment for being attached to the grid. So your your bill, if you look at your bill, you'll see a line that literally says grid payment or attachment, whatever that line is, that's a standard fee across every utility bill or electric bill. And that's just for you being tapped into the into the into the grid. Our panels, we went with I think a hundred and either 105 or 110 cut percent coverage. So meaning that over the course of the year, we have or are able to produce more than than what we were essentially getting uh, power wise. And the reason why we did it that way was because to what you said, Maureen, was you don't get a check anymore. We got they got rid of that. So essentially, we wanted to offset because we're able to like bank whatever and it rolls over. So instead of getting a check at the end, end of the year, which whatever was our surplus in energy, they just roll that over into credits into the next year. So essentially, I wanted to make sure <clears throat> when we ran this, the winter months in New York, whether we get snow coverage and the small and the shorter days, 
of, uh, of sunlight, I wanted to make sure that our summertime was producing much more and banking those hours or banking that energy rather, so that when we had the winter months, it would offset and we can dip into our bank of credit. So I think the most that we've paid since we've done this outside of when we paid off the loan has been maybe a 50 buck or a 70 buck. Maybe I think it was maybe actually 80. We did one month. Maybe once or twice. Yeah, it was one month of 80 bucks and one month of like 30 bucks. Yeah. Outside of that in the last four years has been nothing but the attachment to the grid bill, which has gone up from $10 a month to now 13 and change a month in the, in the last four years. So you're right. They are increasing the, uh, the, the number. They are decreasing the, the advantageous things that you, that would entice a person to go, um, solar, at least here in New York. We had 50% of our loans paid off with the rebate that we got when we, when we put them on the, on the roof. Right. So the amount of credits that we received was now they don't quite insane. We, they don't, they don't offer that anymore. So I think in total, our panels cost us. It was like 30, between 30, 32 and 34,000. Right. It was, we and we got 30, a rebate of 16,000 to pay off the first loan. And the second loan was like $170 every month. And it was supposed to be for 12 years, but of course you try to pay it off as soon as you can. And we paid that off in like two years. So we had, we had the, um, it was like some credit from federal and then the state credit as well. Combine that, it took care of, you know, just about 50% of our bill. And then we went on from there and that's pretty much it. But everything you said was, was, was true and how they're <laughs> decreasing the, ad, the advantage or the enticing of going to solar. Yeah. No, thanks so much for sharing that. And I just want everyone to, to know too, you, you pay that connection fee to the grid, whether you have solar or not it's in your electricity bill. So this is not an additional fee that they have. That's still $13 to be connected to the grid would still be there in addition to their electricity that they would be renting from the utility company if they didn't have solar panels. So just look at your electricity bill and you'll notice that outside of what you're actually paying for your energy usage and kilowatt hours for that month, there are so many other fees, this connection fee, this tax, this whatever. So those all go away when you have panels minus that just basic connection fee. That's always there. But yeah, it's nice to know that you're getting the credits that rack up now. What he was talking about the overages. So that's basically called the offset percent. So when we design a system, we want to look at the last 12 months of usage to get an idea of what your household consumes. And then we always ask questions too, you know, like, are you considering getting an electric vehicle in the next couple of years? Are you going to install a pool? Are you going to do a hot tub? Are you going to do an addition? Because we want to make sure when we do design the solar system, we're going to account for any additional electricity that you may be using in the future so that we can design the right size panels on the home so that we don't get into a situation where, okay, you don't have to pay out of pocket for the next couple of years to the utility company, but now you get that electric vehicle and now you're stuck with an additional 20 or $30 a month usage in addition to the panels. So it's kind of cool because you can overproduce and like they said, they might not be getting a check anymore, but they're still getting credits. And then maybe you don't get credits because now you have a perfect, perfectly designed sized system now that you have the two additional electric vehicles or that hot tub or that pool that you're heating or something. So really cool. A lot of fun things you can do. You can do ground mounts if you don't have the right shape roof, if you have enough property. So the only thing is you can't just be in a super remote area. You do have to be able, we don't do any off-grid installation. So you do have to be able to tap into a grid and utility company. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, they're, it's they're... so fun. I'll make it fun for you guys. I love yes. solar. I'm a nerd. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um, I put the link for them to book a call with you. Yep. And I saw a question from I put the jot form also too, if someone okay. wants to fill Perfect. that out. That's probably a quicker well, either way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh question is uh from Benjamin. What are the advantages choosing solar over a natural gas backup system? Um, I don't know anything about how natural gas could produce electricity if you have electric appliances and lights looks like does chris know the answer can you hear me yeah. yep so what i mean by that is is like here in chicago if the power goes out um you might be out in the winter for hours maybe days so uh, i've been reading more about like generac uh generac uh systems uh backup systems and so oh okay. uh, i was just curious as to how yeah. 
And, and, and particularly if a power outage occurs, who regulates how long you'd be able to go on solar before that particular energy source gets cut off as well? And is that yeah, even possible? You, you would, that's a great question. So that, that's an additional, there's um, a bunch of different companies that we work with. So power is a renewable energy platform. And so we work with local installers. We're basically like a brokerage. We're the general contractor. So we have a bunch of different types uh, and brands of panels and batteries and inverters and different things that we can pull from when we do the custom design for the home. So there's Solar Edge and there's Enphase, which offers batteries and there's different size batteries that you can pay for to attach to your system if you wanted to be able to be completely off the grid and to be able to store enough energy in the battery to be not tapped into the grid in case of a power outage or a storm or something for you know, a, an extended period of time versus just, you know, for a 12 hour period or a 24 hour period in the event of a storm where the, the power went down with the utility company at night and you wouldn't notice because you'd still be able to have your lights on and, and appliances running or charged, you know, so there's the refrigerator without the food going bad. So there are those options. The arguments I've heard, and I can dive more into this. I know this came up a lot with people having questions about um, you know, when we just dealt with the hurricanes here with Hurricane Ian and, you know, what were happening in the event of generators versus batteries, there were a lot of people that had generators that were gas powered and they couldn't, they couldn't access gas to put in them. I mean, we had people in boats taking gas cans across to people in Marco Island and other stuff like that. So that's the one thing that I think would be a benefit to be if you do have a solar system and you do live in an area where there are lots of rolling blackouts or weather that typically can put you without power for an extended period of time, and you wanted to invest in a battery to go with the solar system, that could be an advantage to it. Um, a con is it's, it's costly. It's probably a lot more expensive than a gas generator. I don't know what the going rate for gas generator, um, systems are backups, but you know, a, a completely off the grid battery connected to a solar panel system is probably going to cost you 20 to 30 grand. So did that answer your question? Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and then the roof question. Yeah. So we do do, um, site surveys. So we will send someone out on site to do an inspection of the roof and the integrity of the roof and the quality before. So yeah, typically if the roof is older than 10 years, um, you may want to consider it getting replaced before. The cool thing about Power, the company that I'm partnered with now is you can actually, we actually have preferred roofers that we can have do the roofing work prior to the solar panels being installed. And we can actually take the cost of the roofing job and lump it into the loan amount. So that actually is very supportive for a lot of people to go about it that way. If it's not um, going to be paid for by insurance because it's not new roofing that needs to be done as a result of weather or hailstorm or something. Um, and we do have a 30 year bumper to bumper in-house warranty as well. So if you have a roof within 10 years and it's, it's in good standing and you put the panels on, if anything were to happen, it's no deductible, no out-of-pocket cost to you um, with that warranty. So did that answer your roofing question, Jim? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, Jim. Yep. And then he said oh. something about Tesla Powerball battery system. I don't know if that was a question to another comment that he put. Not sure, but I don't see any other questions. So appreciate you diving deep into this. Um, oh, someone said, sorry, I have been told my monthly bill should be at least a hundred to qualify. I live in Southern California. Um, no, I not necessarily, maybe another company, but not necessarily. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much your current bill is. Um, that might've been told by someone who a lot of people used to really sell the value proposition of we can slash your current monthly utility, you know, electricity bill in half that doesn't really happen that much anymore. And that's only one of, one of the many value propositions you guys heard me speak about in terms of going solar. So even if I always tell people, if I can get your solar payment within 50 to $60 of your current electricity bill, even if it's higher. I consider you a good candidate for solar. It's still a win because you guys are here. So you understand the long-term play. And so it may take three or four years for, you know, the payments to be equal, but in 10 years, it's half of what you would have been paying because, you know, you're just going to be subject to inflation in Southern California. Um, 
San Diego Gas and Electric has gone up 28% in its cost per kilowatt hour over since 2018. So something to to think about. And yeah. I think you just covered that question on the warranty. Was it it's the life of the loan? No, even long it's it's completely separate from the loan. So even people who pay cash, it's oh, a third okay. year bumper to bumper warranty. So we year. have 140 different financing options that we can pull from. The longest loan amounts are 25. We have five-year loans. And of course, you can pay it off too. There's no um, there's no uh, penalties for paying off sooner, um, but it does depend on the, the type of loan. You still are required to pay the dealer fees. So if you are considering paying it off sooner than the loan term, we have five, 10, 15, 20, 25 year loans for different companies that we can work with. Um, I have my two that are my favorite right now. Um, the one that was almost like cash doesn't exist anymore after Halloween went away. Um, but it's a sunlight financial 20 year, 6.99 and 7.99. But the numbers are pretty great that the APR is a little bit higher than some of the other numbers, but it's actually a lower loan amount because the dealer fees are significantly lower. So, and I can run through all that, you know, with okay. you guys. When yeah, you- we, 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 we definitely love running the numbers. Yeah. Uh, so that is something that I know that you'll do with the people who reach out to you. That's part of the process. So like you said, no yeah. hard sell, no. just straight up, like numbers work you- or they don't. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then if you force it to work, cause you're just so amped up about getting solar panels and then, then that's just your own financial yeah. decision-making process. But I guess the goal would be to reduce your net cost yeah. and control it for. And it says forever. it on the proposal too. It will say what your 25 year cost savings is. It will either say you're going to be saving 45 grand over the next 25 years, you're saving two grand or it's a negative. I had someone that just was not a good fit yeah. at all today because they had too much shade and it just, the, the panels weren't effective. The amount we had to put on, it just wasn't, it actually was not going to save the money. But that's the first one I've seen like that in the last 20 that I've done. So got it. Yeah. And granted, if um, rates eventually do come back down, then the deals I'm assuming would be better. So if someone is like, say they're, if you're in a position where Financially doesn't make sense. You know, it's something that you want to do down the line. If we keep doing velocity banking, maybe knock off the car and knock off this, knock off that. And then if rates then come back down, there might be some good opportunities there. So uh, that was another good question. Are HOAs yeah. accepting to solar nowadays? Yeah. And I know there is, it's a yes, but there's additional steps that you have yeah. to take. So as long as you, so we're only residential solar. And as long as you own the roof, right? So it can't be a condominium situation where it's a communal roof, right? So if it's a townhome or a standalone, just with the HOA, um, they're not legally allowed to say you can't anymore. We just work with them through the permitting process. So there's just an approval letter. We abide by certain aesthetics. Maybe they don't want it visible from the street or can't be a certain color. So yeah, but we we work with them um, to make sure that everything is good to go. Awesome. Thank you, Maureen. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Great information, guys. 